Hello everyone and thank you for checking out the latest show of The Conspiracy Chicks. I'm Julie. And I'm Ashley. We have a great show for you this week where we cover a great mix of topics that have been sparking a lot of attention. That's right Ashley. There's something for everybody this week. Forget honest, unbiased reporting about the facts. Instead, it appears perspectives are open to the highest bidder in many cases. Our main story involves a Senate investigation that led to declassified documents proving that Israeli interests have been manipulating the U.S. media via lobbying in order to direct attention to its approved causes. Additionally, a variety of U.S. publications and writers have been bribed into slanting their news. The released files may be viewed online, and they describe the sweeping under the carpet of specific nuclear facilities and airbrushing the description into the facility being a research center. Another payoff went to interfere with American peace proposals for the Middle East. It was also revealed that $36 million had been spent on influencing various United States media agencies to plant favorable and specific stories. Unfortunately, Swaying perceptions via media is nothing new or rare, and many countries have been guilty of the same. As ATS member Maybe Real states, call Israel out, but don't single them out, because so many others have resorted to similar tactics. Maybe Real offers the reader a list of articles where other events have transpired. In one case, the whistleblower site WikiLeaks recently released documents that show the United States paid the Afghan media to air topics favorable to American causes. In another incident, the minister of Iran encouraged a media and internet campaign against Israel to create more favorable images for Iran and to villainize Israel. Other examples include China's media war against Tibet and Russian propaganda against Chechnya. Instead of being a legitimate source of information, too many media sources have declined into swinging towards various pet interests and biased perspectives. You can read all about this topic and the thread authored by ATS member Genius, currently at over 100 flags. The NWO Puppet Factory strikes again. Is President Barack Obama a product of the intelligence community? Wayne Madsen, a reporter and former NSA employee, believes so. In a massive three-part series that is still being added to, Wayne throws out alleged conclusive proof and documentation that Barack, his father and mother have deep ties with the CIA and a much wider intelligence community. Are we really surprised? Barack Obama rose to power from absolutely nowhere. This man, who many of us have never heard of, suddenly rallies and becomes the president of the USA. So can Obama's rise to fame only be explained through his intelligence ruse? His mother a CIA cutout? His father was part of an airlift of East African students to the USA to attend various colleges, a CIA operation. Check out the thread on thebufftopsecret.com for all the ins and outs of this release documentation and allegations as it's pretty big and a whole lot of information to go through. But let's look deeper here. We all know that Bush Senior had connections. It seems the bigger powers elect these guys rather than the public, although I believe Bush Senior was a much bigger player. Skull and Bones comes to mind. But let's look even further back beyond our Obamas and our Bushes and look at the connections with the JFK assassination. He refused to do their dirty work and ended up a dead man. Just look into the mongoose team theory. Researchers such as Jim Mars and Jim Garrison look into a theory which tells of the assassination being organised by rogue agents associated with mongoose. It's believed they set up Oswald as a scapegoat and planted false clues pointing at Cuba, the Soviet Union and the Mafia. The theory provides a motive. Task Force W were angry at JFK for his retreat from the Bay of Pigs and what they perceived as his concessions to socialism. This theory also explains how an official investigation could be thwarted and how Oswald, if he was a US intelligence operative in contact with the Mongoose members, could have been set up to take the fall for it. It's hard to grasp, but without the information that is classified by the US government, we may never know. 
but I do know that the members of AboveTopSecret.com will search as far as they can. The CIA do seem to be the big players in the whole presidential hoo-ha. Only in America, the land of the unlimited opportunities. <laughs> One ATS member really took an initiative to get us the first-hand scoop concerning the pollution off the Florida coast caused by the deep water disaster. That member is Get Ready Already and he has authored two topics containing original footage of the aftermath. He is here with us today for an interview into his findings. Hello there, Get Ready Already. Thank you so much for letting the Conspiracy Chicks interview you. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. It's a pretty day today. Great. Glad to hear it. We're going to jump right into the interview here. So to begin, where exactly was this footage filmed? Uh, the location, it's um, three different beaches, but within about 10 miles of one another, um, straight south from Tallahassee, where I live. It's Bald Point, which is a, uh, a state park and a wildlife reserve. Then Alligator Point is directly adjacent to that, and there are beach houses and a couple of public access beaches on Alligator Point. And then just down Highway 98, not on the, um, those two places are both barrier islands. Um, but if we come back over to the mainland and go down the beach just about 10 miles, there's a place called St. Teresa that has direct access to the Gulf with no barrier island, and that's where the second round of videos were taken. Okay, thanks. So in your first video, you're walking towards the water and mention the discoloration of the sand and the water. Can you explain that a bit for us here? Yeah, definitely. When I moved to Florida about 10 years ago, we lived in Destin and all along the Gulf Coast here, they call it the Emerald Coast, the Forgotten Coast. The waters are a brilliant emerald green color. They're crystal clear. You can scuba dive directly offshore. You can walk offshore, um, snorkel. Um, and the water, you have, you know, anywhere from 30 feet on up to, I've seen it as, as much as 100 feet of visibility in the water. It's just really crystal clear, the prettiest beaches I've ever been to. But as we approached the beach that day, we noticed kind of an amber color to the water. It wasn't brown, but it wasn't the green that we're used to. It wasn't blue. I know um, in some of the responses to my videos, I've seen videos from 2008 and before where the, where the, from a distance, the water is a real pretty blue color, but it wasn't that way. It was a, an amber color. Even when you take it up in your hand, it kind of discolors your hand with this amber color. Yeah, I noticed that when you put your feet in the sand in the first video, the visibility was lost within a matter of inches. And you contrasted that with your second video where it showed much more clarity to the water. So when you sweep your feet in the sand in the first set of videos, Tell us exactly what we're seeing here. That, um, and, and I discovered that by accident. I had my kids with me. We were playing along on the beach. And, you know, we build sand castles. We play in the sand, all that stuff. And one of the neat things is when you're on the beaches here, you can dig a big hole, and it'll fill in with crystal clear water. You know, it, it mm -hmm. looks just like water from your bathtub. But that day, as I scuffed my foot along, the water that would fill in the, the hole that, that my fleet footprints were leaving um, was this same amber color. And what was even more disturbing was um, it would come in in layers. You could see the water on the top part. It would rush in and it would be clear. But then you would see this finger of, of, of oil. And I'm calling it oil. I don't know exactly what it is. I guess an oil and dispersant mixture. But um, I, I see today they're calling it product. I guess is the new politically correct term they're using on the mainstream media. But um, the um it would rush in from the bottom of the hole through the sand and it would stay in layers it was kind of this chocolate syrup type stuff that would come up from the bottom of the sand in the hole amazing so in your second video series you actually dig a hole and really murky liquid appears if it's an oil and water mix could you tell if that was actually oil gathering in the hole right in the second set of videos we brought some a shovel and some post hole diggers um and um, uh, some glass jars to where we could look at the water up out of the hole. And it was, it was really, at first we were excited. We went to St. Teresa, which everybody there had told me they hadn't seen any sign of the oil there so far. So that's why we went there. And as we started to dig our hole, the first six or eight inches of the hole filled in with clear water, which was, which was good. We were kind of excited mm -hmm. to see that. And as we moved down the beach a little bit to start digging a second hole and we were talking and we looked back, we noticed that our first hole was no longer clear. It had that same chocolatey syrup substance coming up from the bottom. 
and it was actually separated into layers, I could take to the eyedropper, I hope you can see it in the videos, but I could take the yeah. eyedropper and pull off a clear layer, and it was perfectly clear, and I could stick it a few inches deeper and pull out this syrupy stuff, So, and it was coming from deeper in the sand, and then as we dug the holes, it was really easy to see um, uh, striations in the sand where certain tides had brought in lines of, of dark colored sand, and certain tides had brought in clear sand, so it was really easy to see that the oil is washing in sometimes, and then it penetrates and goes deeper into the sand, so it doesn't look so bad from the surface. Uh, and going off of that, uh, you mentioned there's a tar ball in your video, but you were curious uh, that you weren't really sure it was a tar ball. So were you ever actually able to make that confirmation? We, yeah, we found several, um, uh, mostly at Bald Point. At St. Teresa, um, I, I'm not, I don't think any of those were tar balls. There was, there was some mucky stuff washing up, and it may have been other debris that was covered in the oil, but it wasn't actual tar balls. But on Bald Point, we recovered probably a dozen, a little over a dozen tar balls, and the biggest one was about three centimeters. So, yeah, there were some real clear ones from, from Bald Point. Well, thank you so much for that insight and your time. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. A very big thank you to Get Ready Already for the interview. The viewer can check out the complete footage in the two topics entitled First Hand Account, Florida Beaches Are Polluted With Oil, and Part 2, First Hand Video Oil on Florida Beaches, with over 200 flags collectively. This is a hot and happening topic. One that caused so much traffic on ATS, it made the server crash. I am totally serious. Cancer is dead, cancer cures from A to Z is the name of the topic that was put together by the member Ignorance Isn't Bliss. He posted an amazing amount of research and information that enlightens us to the cures that should be known to all. The topic suggests that many fruit and vegetables can be the product to save our lives. I have Ignorance Is Bliss on call here in the studio. So let's get right to it and ask him some questions. What was your inspiration for the thread? Recently my mother was diagnosed with lung cancer and that's definitely motivation. Up until that happened, I had known about this substance known as DCA, dichloroacetic acid. So right away I started looking at that again and uh, originally that was going to be like the centerpiece of like the whole what ended up being this cancer is dead thread. But in the process of looking at that and some other things that uh, I remember seeing here and there like curcumin for instance, that's one that just... Uh, you know, my research just kept expanding, expanding to the point where I just had to just stop. I had over 90 entries in the piece, and uh, it just got out of hand. Thing is, there's so much more out there that I just couldn't even get to. You know, at some point, I just had to stop. I just needed to get this presentation out there. While researching, have your thoughts changed about the medical community? If anything, they've been confirmed, you know, like just by my understanding of the way the system works, it being, you know, uh, if they're not going to make a trillion dollars off it, basically, then they're not interested in it. Substance DCA is a prime example of it because with DCA, it was originally made for something else, you know, decades ago. And since then, the patent has expired. And now anybody can produce it for virtually nothing compared to like the kinds of treatments they want to sell people. But because they can't make a trillions of dollars off it, then there's no interest in it. And the studies aren't being done, the trials, human trials for it to be like, a commonplace thing and uh, I mean, when you actually look at what the stuff costs it's literally like thirty dollars for about a thousand doses of the stuff and uh, looking at that alone really really sets the, the stage of the way that the system works what would you advise people researching on cancer it depends if if you're worried about cancer then you want to know a lot of that stuff and try to eat it the best you can work it into your diet and and all that. If you actually have cancer and all that's a whole nother story and you need to not just breathe my piece and then you're done. You need to you need to go beyond it. You need to go far beyond it. The best thing you can do is you gotta find out your particular cell line. You know, just with lung cancer, there's about two hundred different cell lines, very specific types of cancer. Just saying lung cancer doesn't really say a whole lot. And what you want to do with that, you need to get your cell line and then go to Google Scholar and put in the name of the cell line and then put cancer and then apoptosis. Put those three words and, and and you need to go through every paper ever every study ever published and you really need to try to understand exactly what you're dealing with as much as you possibly can and then and, and by doing that you're going to find out a lot more than my thread can ever tell you wow well thank you for joining me here on the conspiracy chick show it seems knowledge is the key to a better life check out the thread and share your thoughts thank you
it looks like a cure for HIV may have finally been discovered. Well, discovered again, according to several conspiracy theorists who believe a suppressed cure has already been found. In the latest round, a team of researchers have identified a protein that destroys HIV in monkeys. This leads to the hope it will work in humans as well after some more investigation and tweaking. Is this a potential cure in the works? Chinese scientists predict massive alien contact within two years. That's a popular topic this week on AboveTopSecret.com. Due to the amount of activity over China, Wang believes that they are edging towards making their first contact. This fella is said to be a respected scholar, researcher and astronomer. ATS members however look further into this man and question if he even works for the said observatory. We ask why two years? Why is that so significant? I forgot, 2012. Just another rambling madman caught up or something more to this. Check it out. They have our rainwater. They have our medicine. Now the government wants to place more restrictions on our food as well. Senate bill makes it illegal to grow, share, trade or sell homegrown food according to a hot topic submitted by ATS member W Citizen. To make matters even more alarming, it appears former Monsanto vice president, the corporate giant which specializes in bioengineered agriculture, took part in creating this bill. Exactly how far is the government willing to go to deprive its citizens of natural rights, including the growing of food? The answer can be found in the link below. We look into the Middle East Forum and bring you a hot topic named Target Iran, the real reason behind the bullseye pegged on Iran. We look into the reasons why the US seem to be so focused on them. Are we simply being spoon fed disinformation by all sorts of media outlets? Our members look much deeper into the nuclear weapons issue and cut through the propaganda. You thought this was about oil? Think again. Don't let this thread slip past you. Now here's some good news that may let us tackle several issues at once, including plastic waste and environmental damage. It comes to us in the form of an invention that converts plastic waste into oil using minimal energy for the conversion. It takes only one kilowatt of energy and one kilogram of plastic to create almost a liter of oil. The machine can even be purchased by individual consumers for home use instead of the typical industrial methods. The Aliens and UFO Forum brings us a hot topic called Caution and You Hoax on YouTube. It seems that a new user to the media site named Sheila Aliens, who prides themselves on taking footage claiming to be strange lights, may in fact be leading people astray. Atheist member Gaffron states he knows exactly what she is filming as he lives in the same location and tells us it's certainly not aliens. We look into this deeper and ask the questions, is she deliberately misleading the viewers or simply mistaken? Check out the thread where you can watch these videos.